Hello, I am Leopoldo Armesto, and in this presentation I will talk about the odometry system of a robot, the main sensors we use and the advantages or the disadvantages of each of them. Uh, this is a table of contents of the presentation in which we will talk about the odometry system of a robot, its importance and the inherent problems it has. Specifically, we will focus on sensors to measure the position of an axis, such as encoders, resolvers, potentiometers or Hall effect sensors. Finally, we will talk about inertia sensors such as accelerometers and gyroscopes based on MEMS technology. The odometry is a set of sensors uh, that the robot incorporates that allow us to measure the path traveled. The main problem with the odometry is that the sensors are based on internal measurements of the robot such as the displacement of the wheels or the acceleration of uh, the moving base or its angular velocity. The measurements are obviously subject to noises or measurement errors that, when integrated over time, generate a drift in the estimation of the robot's position or orientation. Therefore, with the odometry system, we will be able to estimate the position of the robot, but this will generally differ from the real robot position. So, we will not be able to use this system exclusively to close position control loops, either to follow a trajectory, to reach, reach a target position, or whatever purpose. The question that arises is what advantage is obtained by using the odometry system compared to other types of extractive sensors. The answer is quite obvious. The odometry allows us to close internal control loops since it's usually measured variables that are associated with the robot's dynamic response directly, such as the speed or the accelerations. Uh, for, is, for example, it is not the same to close the position of a loop of a robot with a position sensor exclusively than to have a speed sensor since it is better to measure the derivative of the position rather to estimate it. In addition, the sampling rate of the odometry sensors is usually faster and they have a very low latency in providing information compared to other sensors such as uh, GNSS uh, type sensors, cameras, considering in this case the, the time they need for processing. Sorry. Uh, to correct uh, the accumulated uh, errors uh, by the odometry, we must therefore estimate the relative position of the odometry system with respect to the global reference system. This work can be done by fusing proprioceptive sensors with extraceptive sensors. This is something that we will see how to do in another presentation. Here I will show, uh, you, an, I will show you an image uh, with a set of measurement laser data superimposed according to the odometry position and the same data uh, that has been corrected using SLAM techniques. This is something we will talk in other presentations. As seen before, the odometry system can be composed of different types of sensors depending on the robot and the application. Now we will focus on sensors that we use in order to measure the position of an axis, whether rotary or linear, such as an encoder, resolver, potentiometer, or a Hall effect sensor. The main difference in this case between an absolute encoder and an incremental encoder is that absolute encoders measure position, uh, the position univocally which means that each measurement is associated with a specific angular position, while incremental encoders measure the relative displacement of the axis, generating a set of pulses. Uh, we can find encoders of different resolutions, and absolute encoders requires, in general, as many signals as their resolution or some kind of digital interface through a communication bus. Incremental encoders also have um, a resolution that it's been indicated by the number of pulses that can generate after completing a full turn. Um, absolute encoders uh, are usually single turn encoders, while incremental encoders can be single or multi turn encoders. Resolvers, on the other hand, are the precursors of absolute encoders. Uh, but uh, given their robustness, they are still being applied in many industrial applications where the environment is not suitable for encoders, such as dust environments. Uh, 
they work from uh, from uh, or they, they they measure the uh, voltage that is being induced in two coils uh, in the stator that depends on the angle of the rotor. Potentiometers allow the position of an axis uh, to be measured from the reading of uh, an analog signal as a result of displacement the displacement of a wiper on a resistive film. The main problem of the, of the potentiometer is the fatigue as a result of the friction uh, on, uh, on this um, resistive film that causes uh, noise measurements and reduces its useful uh, or its lifetime. A more uh, way to uh, measure, a uh, more robust way to measure uh, the position of an axis would be to use an, uh, a whole effect sensor. In this case, there's a magnet that induces a magnetic field on the sensor that can be used either for positioning using a non-contact positioning uh, to detect the position of a shaft uh, or also to measure the angle position of an axis. Um, thus, it can be used as a mark detection sensor or as an axis position sensor. Encoders are optical sensors that transform these, the mechanical energy of a rotation into an electrical signal as a result of detecting, with a, using a photo detector, the light that is, has been emitted by infrared uh, emitter. This light passes through a disk uh, that is attached to, to, the, to the encoder axis. Here I show uh, what an encoder looks like internally and different kind of disks uh, that we can find depending whether it's an absolute or an incremental encoder. In the figure below, we see how, in this case, an incremental encoder works, which provides two signals, A and B, and depending on the, if the rotation is clockwise or counterclockwise, one of the signals precedes the other, which can be easily detected from the rising and falling edges of these signals. Uh, on the other hand, I show you also some simple calculations uh, on how to compute, in this case, the angular velocity from uh, the rotation of, of, uh, of an axis using an incremental encoder by measuring the increment of pulses between, uh, uh, let's say, uh, periodic, uh, periodic uh, time periods. One of the most important parameters of incremental encoders is the pulse per revolute, or PPR, depending on the maximum speed uh, in which the axis will rotate and the maximum frequency that the encoder can generate these pulses, we can calculate the minimum resolution that we need in order to not to lose pulses. Resolvers, on the other hand, allow to measure the angular position of an axis and this is uh, done by detecting or measuring the voltage that is induced in two coils a result, as a result of a magnetic field that um, is attached to, 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 the, to the axis. And uh, the coils are indeed rotated 90 degrees. One of them measures the cosinus of the angle and the other one measures the sinus of this angle. Therefore, by calculating the or, or computing the arc tangent of the measured signals, we can compute the actual axis angle. Some resolvers include gears that allow you to modify what is known the velocity, which basically relates the electrical degrees with the mechanical degrees. A potentiometer is a simple device that can be used to measure the rotation also of an axis or a linear displacement. The, the output signal of a, that we measure from a potentiometer depends on the position of a wiper and it's basically acting as a resistive uh, a voltage divider. Um, a, a microcontroller uh, can read this signal and its value, VOADC in this case, will depend on the resolution of the analog converter, the number of bits, B, and of course the reference voltage of the analog converter. V, v A, A, D, C. Uh, with this value, we can make some simple con uh, computations and calculations to determine the position of the axis. A whole effect sensor can be used also, uh, in this case, to, can be used to detect the position of an axis, such as a position sensor for, to measure the position of a pedal or a steering wheel. 
and in this case there's a disk with a slot uh, that passes in front of the sensor and the, there's a magnet in which generates a magnetic field that is being detected in the form of a pulse and this is uh, used in order to detect this specific position. In fact, they are used uh, in many mechanisms as a simple pulse uh, counter to offer, uh, let's say, uh, or they offer some advantages compared to uh, optical encoders in uh, harsher environments. In robotics, we use them uh, in order to measure the orientation of an axis. The principle of operation is basically the same, <clears throat> but now what we observe is a magnetic flux density that varies in two orthogonal directions and again using the arctangent of these signals we can compute the orientation as we do with resolvers. Also in robotics we use inertial sensors such as accelerometers and gyroscopes and they are used in order to measure the acceleration or the angular uh, rate uh, respectively uh, and they can work even to measure different axes, uh, x, y, and z. The working principle of uh, accelerometer is that there's uh, some kind of suspended mass whose movement is caused by the, an acceleration, some kind of external acceleration that indirectly generates an electrical signal. There are different kind of uh, technologies, uh, although the ones that we commonly use in robotics are based on MEMS technology. Uh, accelerometers are affected by gravity and therefore gravity must be compensated if we want to use them in order to estimate let's say a robot position and they, they measure, their measurements uh, or the signals include some noises and offsets that causes the, the, a drift on the estimation of the robot position and speed but they are very good in order to close high uh, low, uh, let's say to, to close uh, control loops in order to uh, let's say to close uh, signals that require some kind of quick response such as stabilization of drones. If we use them uh, to measure uh, the position uh, for instance on a mobile base uh, they are immune to wheel skidding and uh, in some robots such as humanoids or drones sometimes we use them to measure the tilt the inclination. Similarly, gyroscopes are used in robotics to measure the rotational speed, speed or angular rate in order to estimate, uh, in the end, the orientation. Those, uh, based on MEMS technology, are again the ones that we used in, uh, in mobile robots, but there are other like the ring laser gyro or the fiber optic gyro that were used in the past. Like accelerometers, they have drifts in the estimation of the orientations that are caused by noises and offsets in the measurements. Capacitive MEMS accelerometers work uh, in a similar way as the mechanical accelerometer in which there's a suspended mass that is attached to an inertial frame um, with a spring and a damper. Uh, this mass suffers a displacement as a, result, as, as a result of external forces and therefore this acceleration is described in the in the first of the equations here. Uh, we can see also the, um, the, um, the in this case the transfer function and the, the the frequency response that it has a resonance frequency uh, and it has uh, a peak on the magnitude on this frequency. But for higher frequencies, the magnitude that means the the, of the, the will will decrease. That means that the forces uh, will be basically, or the acceleration will not be measured. In fact, at low frequencies, we can observe that the acceleration suffered from by the mass is indeed proportional to the displacement. And therefore, the main idea in MEMS sensors is to measure the displacement of this suspended mass uh, from uh, based on the voltage difference that appear as a result of a variation of the distance between uh, a capacitor, the distance of the electrons of a capacitor and the, the electric material. As it can be seen, this voltage is proportional also to the distance and therefore to the acceleration. In short, this will be valid up to a certain bandwidth of accelerations 
And therefore, uh, one of the most important specifications in MEM sensors is precisely the bandwidth. Uh, that limits the ability to measure vibrations at a maximum frequency. Another important aspect to consider are the sensitivity, the amplitude uh, range, uh, or the temperature changes or sensitivity. MEMS gyroscopes work on a uh, principle very similar to the MEMS accelerometers, but in this case we have one main axis uh, uh, for our driving axis uh, in which we need to uh, generate an oscillation of, of a suspended mass and then we have a sensing axis in which we will sense a displacement when there is a, an angular velocity when, when this mass is affected by some angular velocity which must be of course uh, perpendicular to the both axes we mentioned. This oscillation will be caused or will be uh, part of the Coriolis, uh, Coriolis force, or will be caused by the Coriolis force. And the oscillation that we need to generate on the driving axis will be generated using uh, uh, the driving electrodes, and they, this uh, will have a magnitude F0 and a frequency omega, and that will cause an, uh, an oscillation in that direction, uh, and of course the displacement X0. And similarly, uh, the displacement that we'll measure on the, uh, the, uh, the sensing axis will be y0. That will be proportional to this displacement uh, on the driving axis x0, but also on the angular velocity omega of the suspended mass, which can be basically uh, detected with using capacitive uh, electrodes as we saw before. Well, in this presentation we have seen the main sensors that we uh, used for the odometry system of our robot. Thank you very much.